You're standing at a fork in the road with a guard on each path. Both guards want you to take their path, and in trying to convince you, you learn that one guard always lies while one guard always tells the truth. They give one final statement each to try and convince you to take their path. Which one do you take? That is the basis for Calvin Weeble's Doors, a first-person logic puzzler, Doors has you making your way through strange environments, solving what's basically the classic two paths riddle with statements written on doors instead of guards standing at paths. Every door has something written on it, and you need to determine which path is correct. But of course it's not always as simple as one door is correct and one is wrong. While the difficulty curve is a little strange, Doors will be constantly making minor adjustments to not only the rules for the puzzles, but also to the doors themselves and the environments that you're in. Sometimes two doors have correct statements on them, sometimes only one door has a correct statement, sometimes three doors do. Sometimes there are two or three doors, other times there are a bit more than that. The only real constant in doors is the way that it makes you think, the way it stretches your mind, all from the basis of one simple riddle and the human desire for bacon. The game may seem a bit silly at first, after all, it starts by telling you that one door in each of these trials is going to lead you to bacon. As you progress, things get a little strange, weird visual glitches will happen, and while avoiding spoilers, at one point you end up in a very, very different environment. And on that note, I'd really like to avoid spoilers here, not only because this is a puzzle game, but also because the way Doors leads you and reveals things or mixes them up is a part of its charm, a part of the experience. This is, frankly, another game that's best gone into as blind as possible. Visually, the majority of Doors pulls very strongly from the design book for Limbo, and that's far from a bad thing. The use of foggy, black and white environments not only allows for some very atmospheric and visually interesting segments, but it also allows for a very shocking change later on in the game. Combining that with the audio cues in some of the levels, it makes for some frankly brooding and uneasy atmosphere. The way the game makes you think makes you sit and ponder not only each puzzle, but also the reason for being there at length, and then it mixes things up later on. It really reminds me of Stanley Parable. It gets you to question not only the doors, but your reasons for being here in the situation that you're in, and then it throws a curveball at you, teases you with some big reveal, and then takes it away to push you through more puzzles, giving you a whole new reason to complete them. Both of these connections and obvious pulls from these two games are intentional, I'm sure, as it's self-described as inspired very heavily by both games. Now, due to the simple pick-and-choose nature of Doors' core gameplay, it's actually fairly easy to just brute force your way through a puzzle. Just start from one door and choose until you succeed. Respawning doesn't take long, though some of the walks to the door might, and failure doesn't seem to be punished very heavily at all. I don't know whether this should be counted against the game or not. Sometimes a puzzle is just difficult, and while I want to progress, I'm simply stumped. The option to just bash your head against a puzzle to progress is, in a way, refreshing. Many a puzzle game has gone unfinished by myself because I got stuck and I couldn't make progress, and that's just not a problem here. The downside to just brute forcing your way is that some of the thought provocation is lost when you take the simple way way out, and that's the whole reason for playing Doors. Doors is a uniquely delivered puzzle game built off of a simple riddle and the desire to get those that play it to stretch their minds. You can get it on Steam for about 5 bucks. If you like puzzles, riddles, or the Stanley Parable, then this is one that you should check out. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Indie Bytes. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please remember to leave a like and subscribe for more. If you have any indie games that I should check out, then please shoot them my way. You can leave a comment down below, or you can drop me a line on Twitter. My handle's at ForkH, or you can shoot me an email at Fork4H at gmail.com. I'll see you next time. Bye!